was a story someone made up. But it's all more or less true as it happened. In the years after World War I, great changes were taking place in America. The Depression came and went, and Prohibition came to stay for 14 crime-filled years. In 1923, it brought to a Texas border town a lone and unarmed rider who would not have been able to buy a drink anyway. Prohibition or no. Because you see, in those days, it was still against the law to sell firewater to an Indian. Beautiful boots. I'm going to make them shine like a mirror. You've been riding long? Very long. I've never seen you before. What is your name? Three persons. Thomas, three persons. I like that. You're an Indian? Cherokee. What do they call you? Alondo. Ah, you know this border towns. They're not fun anymore. They used to be a time. They were gunfighters and heroes. When a stranger rode into town, he goes straight to the saloon. And <laughs> not to a shoeshine boy. Now, there's not even a saloon to go to. You know a man named Harry Clay? Sure, everybody knows. His office is over there. Senor? Three persons? I like your name. I don't like my last name. Do you mind if I take yours? Don't. It'll give you nothing but trouble. Took you a long time to get here. I wasn't sure I was coming. You busy? How'd you pay for that shoe shine? Saved up. Oh, it's a waste of money, Cherokee. I'm gonna dirty those boots of yours. The war's over, Captain. Don't tell me. Ask me. The last time I gave you an order, it got you decorated. It almost got me killed, too. Not that it bothered you. No, that wouldn't bother me. After all, what's one dead Indian, more or less? The world is changing, but you haven't. Oh, come on. You're still alive, aren't you? You still got your medal. I hocked it three months ago. So I get my boots fixed. So you're broke, huh? Well, I'm gonna do you a favor. You come and work for me. You're telling me again. 
Rheumatism? Yeah, 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 rheumatism. You ought to go someplace where it's hot and dry. Now, look. What's the job? You buy a ranch with all your federal money? You want me to be your foreman? No. I want you to put on a uniform again, Cherokee. Police this time. So that's why you wrote me to come see you. Well, I heard you were having a tough time. Yeah, so... well, thanks. It was a nice trip. Guess I'll head back to New Mexico. There's a sheep ranch. Were you running sheep at Medicine Hat or in Durango? All right, I was a deputy at Medicine Hat and a private guard in Durango. They don't have wire fences in Durango. A gun marks the fence there. I shot a man. Oh, I had no choice. He pulled a gun. Big criminal. Rustled one skinny little old steer. I turned him over so I could see his face. And just before he died, he said three words. I was hungry. And his poor face was as skinny as that steer. I made up my mind that day I wouldn't put a gun on again ever. Mr. Clay, something happened. Now, don't tell me about it. Let me tell you, you didn't find Candy Gomez. He found you. You raided that shack at the edge of town. Oh, it was good information, very good. But nobody was home. The windows were all boarded up. I know, I've seen the place. And there was a bottle of nice, new, homegrown whiskey waiting for you on the table, and you nabbed it. And then somebody pulled the main beam of the house out, and the whole roof fell down on your heads. Is that right? Is that what happened? What's the difference? We just came here to tell you we was going to quit. <laughs> oh, no. I can't let you quit. You still got two weeks' pay coming. You're going to have to sue Washington, and that's a long way from here. Even by telegram. Well, the next time that Gomez is going to kill us. <laughs> Meantime, go down to the store and get me a cigar. Huh? What, the both of us? Well, yeah, it'll take both of you to handle it. Gomez, Candy Gomez. Why don't you arrest him? Because he won't arrest. He lives about one mile from here, but it might as well be a thousand because it's across the Mexican border. He's 25 years old and he's rich. He and a fat joker named Charlie Rains are running 150 cases of liquor across the border two or three times a week. They're shooting and killing to get it across. And they've got every hoodlum in the area to work for them. In the past five months, they've killed three of my men. Two policemen. Bad stuff, that rheumatism. Oh, a shotgun blast. Candy Gomez. But Cherokee, I need someone who can fight at night, in the rocks, in the tall weeds. Indian style. Yeah, that's right. Twenty dollars a day. It's good pay for an Indian. That's pretty good pay for anybody. But I can't spend it like anybody, can I? No matter how much you pay me, there's some things I can't buy. No matter how much you pay me, there's some places I can't go. What do you want me to do, change the world? Well, you're coming to work for me? You asking? I'm asking. I'll think about it. What for? Because first I want to cross over the border. Visit this fella, Charlie Raines and see if he can better your offer. Candy Gomez. He's here. Well, 
I declare. Gracia. You know who that man is? Sure, he's loco. Doesn't even carry a gun. Oh, don't let that fool you. But I hear he's killed more men than Candido himself. <laughs> but he's a shooter. He never worked my side of the street, though. But he's famous. See, I know all about him. They spy on me, and I spy on them. And sometimes the same joker works for both of us. Double salary, double chance. Mr. Three Persons. It is you. It's me. An honor, sir. My name is Raines. Charlie Raines. Doubly honored. You know me. Apparently not as well as you seem to know me. Oh, don't underestimate your fame, sir. We exiles still remember your last trip to Mexico. It's a long time ago. General Pershing. I was just a scout. Are you still scouting? I'm not sure yet. Perhaps we can help you decide. Whatever Clay offered you, I'll give you $10 more cash money. Now you can do better than that, Mr. Raines. I mean, for a man of my fame. Can you buy a drink? I'm not much on drinking. Can you vote? No, you can't. All you can do is that dirty work. Am I right, Mr. Three Person? What does Clay want you to do? Preserve law and order? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and put you out of business. You and Mr. Candy Gomez. I noticed you lost your gun, Indio. So I thought maybe, possibly. like to share this one with me. What for? We're all friends here, aren't we? And because we are friend Indio, we're going to have a friendly fight. That is why I took out five bullets and left only one. You see? I see. Only one gets killed. Okay. Fair enough. I'm not afraid to die. You afraid to die? Yes. <laughs> you are too kind to live on this earth. So I may have to deliver you to heaven. Such is the goodness of my heart. number. Did you know that? Or don't you believe in luck? Luck can run out. Not mine, Indio. I got that number in my dream. I always win with four. Four aces. Four of a kind. Four legs on my horse. Four women. In four different places. That's not luck. That's stupidity. to die? You 
Grab the generosity. Please. Either kill me or give me back my gun. All right, Gomez. You prove whatever it is you wanted to prove. Now let's quit this game. Come on. See that cucaracha? Your bullet, Gomez. So fast, Indio. You are not going to die so quick. Will you die? You're going to do a little dance for me. Do you know how to dance? Dance! Come on, dance! Hey, 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 dance! Oh, take it. Charlie, let me go. Let me go. I don't dance, Gomez. Not for you. Not for anybody. Easy, bandido. Easy. You better not wait around, Indio. belong to Charlie Raines? I don't belong to nobody. Why'd you do it? Are you going back across the border? Yeah. Do you know a boy there by the name of Alonzo, Shine Shoes? Maybe. Tell him to come and see me. Tell him to come and see Gracia. I see him. Day after tomorrow, by the creek, on this side of the border. If I see him. Please. I will do anything. you decide. You see Candy Gomez over there? Yeah. Likes to kill that one. Oh, yeah. And he's good at it, too. But so are you. I never liked it. How's your shoulder? That's all right. Uh, go down to the general store in the corner. They'll fix you up with a uniform and give you a 45. Oh, here, here. Get yourself a shine. Report back here at midnight. Charlie Raines is going to move out a big shipment. How do you know? I got word. A pigeon told me. Your pigeon? Or Charlie's pigeon? I'll see you at midnight. of grease on the axles.
Foxed. in my boots, Alonzo. Clean them up? Oh, sure. You look like you're happy. Met a friend of yours today. Who, me? What's his name? Girl. Named Grassy. I don't know her. I don't know nobody like her. She works across the border. i never been across the border. Beautiful girl. No more dust. Five cents, American. Please. Anyway, this girl you say you don't know, she wants you to come see her right away. Is she in trouble? Is she sick? Not sick. Sad, maybe. Sometimes I can be big trouble. This girl, you see her. You tell her not to bother me. What's this grass here to you? Nothing. She used to be my sister. I'm thinking of going fishing. You grow any catfish around here? There's a creek but it's below the border. Think you can show me where it is? You've never been below the border. I'll show you where it is. Lonzo, do me a favor. Walk in that hotel right now. What's the matter? Why? Do what I tell you. Is that your enemy? I didn't even know him. Hey, woman, where are you going? For a ride. Hey, Charlie, tell it to me. I want to talk to you inside. Leave her alone. It's her day off. She rides. Maybe she rides across the border. They'd send her right back. You see, Mr. Gomez, in the United States, they only admit decent citizens. <laughs> What's so funny? That's right, Jolly. That's why you're in Mexico. What's the matter? Nothing. I'm going back. Why? Just changed my mind. You afraid of something? No, I'm not afraid. Then what? I just want to go back. What? There's some kind of trap. Please, let go! You will 
didn't come with you. No. What happens between you two? What happens? I take him from my dead mother's arms. And I feed him, I buy him clothes, I show him to read, and I let him grow up to be a Yankee. And he hates me. He loves you. Maybe he doesn't like you, that's all. I am a cantina girl, and I work for Charlie Rains. But he doesn't know me. That Alonzo, he doesn't know me. Why don't you leave, Charlie Raines? You don't make that much money, do you? Oh, I go run away. Sure. And after a while, he would send Gomez to find me. And then Gomez will find me, and then he will kill me the way he is going to kill you. Maybe. Maybe I'll kill him first. Sure. You keep shooting at the cockroaches. And maybe the bullet will bounce up and kill Gomez, huh? Yes. The other day. Why you don't kill him then? I gave up killing. I worry, Dad. Now I have a friend that's in trouble. You mean you kill for friendship? And not for money? Grassy, if I knew when that next ship and a whiskey was coming in. So that's what you want. Information. Just like every policeman. That's why you come here today. I... I came because of Alonzo. I came because I made a promise. You lie, policeman. You lie. You lie. You're a beautiful woman. Wait. 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 Don't run away because I fight you. I have to fight you. I will tell. You don't have to tell me. No, I want to tell you. I want to tell. They will come the same place. Charlie does not think you will expect the same place twice. Big shipment? Yes. Many men and many barrels. And many rifles. When? Tonight. Thanks. I'll talk with Alonzo. All right. Now, no shooting till they get through. I use the flare pistol. Now, when I fire it, not before, you come out shooting. And be careful, because I'll be alongside. Now, take cover. You have to move, crawl. And no talking. Nothing. Silence. Like an engine? Yeah. Like an engine.
I don't look like that, Candido, do I? Easy, Candido, easy. We gotta quit for a while, that's all. You got to quit, not me. Nobody make you general of this business. You can quit any time. If I were to shoot you, your blood would be yellow. Charlie, let somebody run this whiskey who is made like me, like iron, like dynamite. What do you want me to do, huh? Charlie, there's a hole in the cantina. Somebody look and they spy. I tell you, they know everything. Somebody tell them. It's blind luck. No, Charlie, no blind luck. They knew the place and the time. We move, they move. One more night like the last one, and I cannot get any more men. It's blind luck. Clay can't buy my people. He hasn't got my kind of money. Where's your woman? She's riding. Riding. Maybe she ride out to see Harry Clay. Maybe. I pay her too much. Money. Maybe she has a sweet lover on the other side. She what? So I heard. So they tell me. One of the girls when she was drunk. And you know how a drunk will talk. They'll tell you everything. Cut her heart out if it's true. No, Charlie. I got a better idea. Street person who's asked me. I came for him. How are you? You all right, huh? You eat, you sleep good, I huh? I'm not my mother anymore. I am still your sister. Alonso, listen to me. Look at me. I think maybe Thomas three persons is going to get rid of Charlie Reigns and Gomez. Oh. I can run away then. I can leave the cantina. I have money saved. We can go away. We can go to Mazatlan. Mazatlan? I have my own money. United States money. I'm through with all this. You are through with this? You are through with me? Do you think you can forget what you were? You think you can forget your mother and your father? I can forget. Across the border, it's easy to forget. I'm glad you are growing rich across the border. Shining shoes. But don't think you can forget. You can hide all day, but you must sleep. And when you sleep, you will dream. And you will dream of all of this. The sister you threw away. You don't have to go away with me. You can forget about me, that's all right. But don't try to kill what you are. You will only kill yourself.
I took her down to the church. She can't stay there forever. Your love life is your problem, Cherokee, not mine. She's your problem. You want me to finish this job? She's your problem. Listen, immigration will not give her a visa. They know who she is. Who is she? Who is she? She's a cantina girl. She belongs to Charlie Ray. She belongs to nobody. This cantina girl gave us the information we needed to have. If we get Gomez and Reigns, it's because this cantina girl helped us. How do I know what information she gave you? Because I say so. Now listen, you asked me to kill for you, and I did. Now, you do this one thing for me. I can't. Not now, anyway. Later, after we've caught Gomez and Reigns, maybe. She can't go back. Gomez killed her brother. He'll kill her. I'm sorry. Uh, no, you can't quit. Things are going too good. We've stopped them four times now. I won't let you quit, Cherokee. Don't you ever call me Cherokee again. I'm not something you buy. I'm not something you pick up and put down like a gun. I'm not your Indian. Just remember that. You walk out that door and you've got trouble. I'm walking out this door. And I've got trouble. Don't, Tom. It's... What? Desertion in the face of the enemy? Arrest me, but later, Captain. Tom, where are you going? Across the border. You can't take them alone. You'd like to help me. Would you like to do that? Would you like to do that, Captain? You take Reigns and I'll take Gomez. The law won't permit me to go across that border, and you know it. Oh, I know your law. I know your law. Your law keeps reminding me what I am and who I am. No thanks, Captain. Take care of your rheumatism. Nothing foolish, Indio. Nothing foolish. Just something I should have done the first time I saw you. What for, Indio? You and me were two of a kind. We could be rich together. It is not too late. It's very late. Indio, you cannot kill a man like this. Like you killed that boy? No, no, Charlie. Charlie did it. I swear it, Charlie killed the boy. I saw him. These are your last words. You ought to speak the truth. Indio, I would like to say a prayer for Candido. Pray. Mr. Raines. Open your hand and let go of the gun. Where's the rest of your crew? Gone. There's only me. They're scared of you, Mr. Clay. They ran out on me.
Charlie Raines. Out of business. Thanks. For what? For crossing the line. Now, look. Don't get any ideas about why I came over here. It wasn't to save your hide. No. I'd have gotten him sooner or later. With or without me. That's right, Cherokee. That's right. Tom, you did a good job. Good job of killing? Where are you going now? It's all done, isn't it? about me? How can I? I've got nothing. Nothing but memories of dead men, some of whose names I didn't even know. What's the difference? A man like me, what's he need? Nothing. Love?
This must be the shortest vacation on record. My hand still hurts. Yes. I'll put some Novocaine on as soon as we get home. It isn't a tooth, Dad. Uh, no, it's not a tooth. But all over the body, the physiology of pain is the same. Stand still. Now shut up and nobody will get hurt. Throw your wallet on the floor. Are you an addict? Get your wallet out of your pocket and throw it on the floor. Where's your purse? I, I left it in the car. Don't none of you move. I think he was just pretending. He wanted drugs. Suppose he takes the car with all our new clothes. He's already got our trip money. Bert, uh, we've got to do something. I had the phone disconnected. There's a, a gun in the whole closet with ammunition. Joe, the gun belongs to my brother. I don't know anything about guns. Couldn't hit the side of a house. He is going to take the car. I'm going to get that gun. You just point it. He certainly doesn't know his way around cars. Flooded the engine. Oh, here, I'll do it. I'm sure he hasn't got a gun. You're not sure. And I'm not sure. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Well, you do. As soon as he drives away, we can go to the Murphys. I'll telephone the police from there. Dad, you could stop him. Oh, no. These addicts can get pretty desperate. I wouldn't run the risk of killing you or your mother or me. And I certainly wouldn't want to kill an unfortunate man. All are lovely. Oh, Joe, they can be replaced. Said there must be some night maneuvers.
recognize you. You're Dr. Andrew's boy. Come back here. All right, I'll see you on Thursday then. Huh? Thursday it is, Doc. Unless I lose my courage before then. It wasn't that bad. I guess not. Yes, yes. The kind of construction I'm doing on them takes a lot of time. Did you get a check? No, I'm sorry. I just couldn't think of a way to bring it up. He's had a lot of illness in his family this year. Dr. Andrews? Yes, come in. We've never met, but I've seen you. I live on Beam Street. My name's Renson. Renson, how are you? Listen, I think I saw your boy a few minutes ago running off that old lady's property. Now, you know the kids around here devil her something awful. And the little ones think she's a witch. And I think your boy was making noises under her windows. Rex hasn't been out of the house. I've been upstairs with him all evening. I thought I saw him go out after supper. Well, he came right back in. He said he was tired, and I told him to go upstairs to bed, and he did. Well, say I'm sorry then, but I was sure it was your... It's just that the poor old woman's... Well, I, I'm sorry. Good night. Where were you? Mom, I wasn't tormenting Mrs. Lyons or anybody. You say I'm old enough to be trusted? I believe you, son. I believe you because Mrs. Lyons is an old lady. Can't defend herself. To take advantage of her would be chicken. I know how you feel about that. Is he still up? Yes, and he's assured me that he wasn't anywhere near her house. <sighs> Good. Hi. Hi, Rex. Yeah, Dad? Well, I've been thinking. I might take a couple of weeks off uh, later on in the summer, and I'm wondering. Maybe you and I can go someplace, do some fishing. And your mother could come on later. How's that sound to you? Swell. Yeah. Looks like you've been in a lot of tall grass this evening. Some place where they don't cut the lawn very much. I ought to be getting in bed, Dad. Rex, uh... I suppose you're about as good a shot as a man ever want to be. Right now, uh, don't you think it's about time that you got interested in some more convivial sport? You know, like um, tennis, maybe, baseball? I'll think about it. Let me put it this way. What use do you think you can make in your life of this skill that you've, you've taken such pains to develop? It's dangerous skill. Maybe I'll go to Africa and become a white hunter. Yeah, you could. If you'd let me, I could hunt around here. Kill some inoffensive animal? No, Rex. Do you think there's a deficiency of meat in your diet? Or did you just think it up just now? Just to hurt me? Yes, sir. Ah. Look, Rex, I know that Mrs. Lyons is, uh, what people used to call touched. And I know that boys of your age 
really don't have much feeling for other people's sufferings. You, you, you can't. It's in the nature of puberty. That's what you are, you know, right now. You're pubescent. I wasn't anywhere near that old lady's house. I see. Well... All right, even if you weren't, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go and see her. See her? Yes. She doesn't see anybody. Sit down right now and write her a letter. Rex, I want you to do this. Now tell her who you are. Tell her your father's Dr. Bert Andrews, a dentist. Tell her you've got some time on your hands this summer. Ask her if she's got any chores that you can do for her. And you put that in her mailbox right after breakfast. And tell her you'll be by after lunch. See her. But, but I'm due at the rifle range tomorrow afternoon. That's too bad. You just may have to miss it one day. Bert, I heard what Rex said just now. He has a chance to win a trophy tomorrow. This comes first. Have you ever read any of the letters that old crank Mrs. Lyons writes to the newspapers? She's anti-everything. Any against any sort of progress, against anything and everybody. This doesn't give anybody the right to take advantage of her defenselessness. Her total defenselessness. I told you I didn't take advantage of Mrs. Lyons or anybody else. All right, baby. Andrews. Did you get the letter I left? I got a letter, all right. You think I wouldn't see through that? You just want to get in here, don't you? I pay my taxes. My grandmother helped my grandfather fight Indians right here on this land. I won't be driven out. Nobody wants to drive you out, Mrs. Lyons. I just wanted to know if I could do some odd jobs for you. I'm sorry I bothered you. My, my grandparents used to fight, fight Indians around here, too. My great-grandparents, anyway. Andrews? Well, my mother's name was Blake. Well, I, I, I'm sorry I bothered you. There used to be some Blakes. Come back here, Mr. Blake. Young Blake. Yes, ma'am. Come on in, Mr. Blake. Come on in. Come on. Hi, too, Mr. Blake. Want a cup of hot chocolate? Gee, that'd be real great, Mrs. Lyons. You carry a gun. Not many men carry guns around here anymore. You want to be sure they don't take yours away from you, the way they took mine. What do you mean? They took all my ammunition, and they took out the bolt. What good is a gun without bullets and a bolt? The last man who went through my door was my husband. And he wasn't coming in. He was going out and he was dead. My husband's dead and my cat's dead. Come on in. What kind of rifle is this? It's a British Enfield from the First World War. Oh, it's such a good. 30 caliber? 303. Our boys used it to fight in the trenches. <laughs> I bet this so good has killed a lot of hineys in its day. It's killed a lot of deer, I'll tell you that. I killed a lot of deer myself with it. 
used to come down and eat flowers. Well, look, if you want to work, why don't you start picking up all of that stuff? Are you just waiting around to collect your unemployment insurance? Like the rest of the ones your age. Yeah, when you get through with that, I got plenty more for you to do. That is, if it's work that you really want. You. Hello, Joe. What's all this? A few bits of light reading brought back by our son, the rag picker. Oh. Uh -huh. Did he uh, like Mrs. Lyons? Not particularly. But he did miss a chance to compete for the George E. Diskin Cup. Oh, Joe. Look, hasn't this gone on long enough and far enough? You've made a way of life out of a, a small incident, a burglary that should have been forgotten the next day. And you've made Rex doubt his father. That means he doubts himself. Look, Joe, if I'd have gotten involved in a gun battle with that man, one of us might have been killed. You have a patient waiting. Black, and he had a second and a half to go. Not bad for your first rapid fire. If it had been real, I'd have killed an enemy with each shot. I'll tell you, Andrews, when somebody's shooting back at you, your accuracy's likely to fall off a little. At least mine does. So was the Enfield a good rifle? 
Sure. Not much different from the World War I Springfield. Well, do they still make parts for it? Now, you know better than that. Don't point a gun at a man. Unless you mean to kill him. I know, I'm sorry. But listen, where can I get a bolt for an Enfield and some ammo? I'll ask at the gun shop later. Go ahead. For the old lady's gun. You're really gonna do it. And here's 20 rounds of ammunition. After she has these, nobody can say we were tormenting a defenseless old lady. Or that we're chicken. Whoever said that we were chicken? I don't know. Anyhow, what do you care what people say while we're being buried? She may be a good shot, but she's not that good. Us in the dark, I don't think she'd hit either one of us. Besides, we'll have a much better chance than soldiers would in a war. Listen, man, I'm a red-blooded American boy that wants to live. Besides, the first shot she takes, people will be running from as far away as Washington, D.C. What do you think they'd say? They'd say, what are you doing giving firearms to an oddball like that? Well, I'm just going to put it in her mailbox. She'll probably think Hitler sent it or some other old friend. Oh, come on, Rex. They can trace it. OK, so nothing happens to you or I. So she shoots the mailman when you feel lousy. Do me a favor. Throw them away for me, in the river or someplace. Well, the river's dry right now. Well, then bury them. I just want you to do it before I change my mind. Sure, you're right. I wouldn't want any innocent bystander to get shot. You or me. But sometimes these days, I, I just don't even care. Very good fit. Mm. Uh-huh. You uh, enjoy your work, don't you, Bert? Oh, oh, yeah. 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 I guess I do. I was going to be the great brain surgeon, you know, but the family came along. Got to make a living. Mm -hmm. How is young Rex these days? He's 14. I see. And cheer up. You'll be better in about 15 years. My son's 30. I'm, I'm beginning to sort of like him again. <laughs> Sam, uh, I lied to you on the phone. Well, the reason I uh, moved your appointment up was not because I'd finished the inlay earlier. As a matter of fact, I was up late last night getting it ready. I want to ask a favor of you. What is it? Well, you know, when I met you on the street on Saturday, you told me about that falcon's nest that you'd found. You put up a blind. Bert, it's a beautiful prairie falcon nesting. You want to go out with me tomorrow? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Would you mind not going tomorrow and letting me go up there alone with Rex? He's got the idea that bird watching is an effeminate sport. I used to be kind of close to him, but. Well, sure thing, Bert. The nest will still be there next week. I'll go next week. You can have it to yourselves tomorrow. Sam, next week the nestlings will be gone. You and I both know that. I wouldn't ask this of you if, if I didn't feel that it was very important. And Sam, hmm? your dental bill for the year is herewith canceled. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to do that.
It's been so long since you and I went bird watching, you forget we don't carry firearms out we here. We might see some pests. I'm allowed to shoot at a rattlesnake, for instance, right? Maybe I can get in some practice on a live target. This way, I guess, huh? Yeah. Up the trail. Well, we better be careful from here on. This way. Be careful through here. Rex, let's be quiet now from here on. We're getting close to the blind. Rex. Look, I'm making an effort. Please, how about meeting me halfway? Okay. That's the father. Looks like just a plain old chicken hawk to me. No, no. It's a prairie falcon. They're very rare hereabouts.
Rex, as long as you're in my charge, and that'll be quite a few years yet, you will not own or fire a gun. Mother gave that to me. It was mine. It wasn't yours. Go on back to the car. Go on! Come in, Joe. I saw Rex just now. He told me about your bird watching, about what happened. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a very good morning for either of us. It was a terrible thing for him to have done. He knows how wrong it is. I think he's truly sorry. Yes, I rather expected him to come in here and tell me that himself. And he didn't say one word on the way back. No, after we got here. He will. He'll be in in a minute. But you have to promise me something first. I do. He tells me you took all his guns away from him. Yes, I did. I intend to dispose of them. I'll probably give them to some worthy deer slayer. But to shoot the falcon was wrong. But that doesn't mean that therefore all guns are, are evil. If this is leading to where I think it is, I don't see where it's indicated that I should bargain for an apology from my son. But you don't have to. You're not bargaining with him. It's just that I feel that this whole experience with guns is helping him develop in a way that I think he should develop. You married a dentist and a bird watcher. I was not a gunfighter. No, but you were going to go on and finish medical school, remember? You were going to do a lot of things. But you've gotten milder and milder. Yes. Milder. Like one of those new filtered cigarettes. Well... This is one time I am not going to be mild. He is not going to get the guns back. Oh, come on, Rex. There's night maneuvers tonight. No matter what time it is, if you hear jets, we meet right here, right? I just wish I'd buried those things deeper. About a hundred feet deeper. Oh, we done real wrong, Rex. You gonna be here if there's noise tonight? Yeah, I'll be here. We're underage. They can't hang us.
Yeah. Night maneuvers, just like last time. <coughs> he told you he didn't have anything to do with that. Yeah, he also said he didn't smoke. <coughs> well, lots of boys sneak occasional cigarettes. Yes, and lots of boys probably <coughs> bedeviled helpless old people, too. <coughs> She's got a gun. Police took out the firing mechanism a year ago. Well, I gave her a new one. What? And some ammo so she wouldn't be defenseless. I'll go and call the police. She needs help right now. Mrs. Lyons! It's all right, Mrs. Lyons. I'm a neighbor. Bert, get down. You're making a perfect target of yourself. I'm Dr. Andrews, the dentist. but they don't shoot at them. Uh, I'm Dr. Andrews. I'm the dentist. I live down the street. Don't you make a lot of noise, those airplanes. That's awful. But we're lucky to have them. No, come on. You're all right now. Mm. Sorry, Mrs. Mm. Over here, come over. Over here to the tent. There you are. Why don't they go back to their own planet? Is she all right? Why don't they go back where they came from? She's feeling better now. You're all right, Mrs. Lyons. Just one of those smart aleck kids. You can hit me if you want to. You go on home. I'm going to talk to you later. For, for, for a man I said was so mild, you were pretty rugged. Go and call Dr. Reynolds, please. Tell him to hurry over here. Yes, sir. 